And it's a lunchtime Car Con Carne today. I'm James Van Osdell and Car Con Carne is sponsored by C&H Financial Services. As business owners continue to figure out just what they're doing here uh, in this new normal of the coronavirus era, CNH Financial Services is here to help. They offer a variety of products, ranging from traditional merchant accounts to a zero cost payment processing solution, which eliminates the expense associated with accepting Visa, MasterCard, Discover, and American Express as a form of customer payment. CNH Financial Services ETAP solutions, easy to set up for your business for online ordering and curbside pickup. CNH also offers cost effective commercial lending programs to help you get your business the money it needs needs to make it through these unprecedented times. To learn more, contact CNH Financial Services at 855-600-2437 or go to chfs.us. Also, this weekend, Saturday night, this has been a year that none of us asked for, none of us wanted, and yet here we are and we're making the best of it. We're going to do something fun Saturday, something that is fun yet safe and socially distant. Peg Boy celebrates their 30th anniversary this weekend, Saturday night. It's a drive-in show at SeatGeek Stadium in Bridgeview. 30 years of Peg Boy. Local H is opening up along with Jake Burns of Stiff Little Fingers and the Bull Weevils. Tickets are at, our doors are at five. You can buy tickets at chicagodrivein.com. My guest today, uh, the, the cream of the crop, the, the, the peerless rock critics, Jim DeRogatis and Greg Cott. Music journalism simply doesn't get any better than what these guys do. They are the co-hosts of Sound Opinions, heard on roughly 150 stations nationwide. And just for some background, for literal decades, Greg Cott, the music critic at the Tribune for decades. He's written some essential music biographies, including Wilco, Learning How to Die, and I'll Take You There, Mavis Staples, the Staples Singers, and the music that shaped the civil rights era. He's also contributed a stunning amount of work to other books, magazines, and websites. Uh, To his left, Jim DeRogatis, who is my spirit animal, and he's also served as the rock critic at the Chicago Sun-Times for 15 years. He is an associate professor of instruction at Columbia College. He's written 11 books, including Let It Blurt, The Life and Times of Lester Bangs, and Soulless, The Case Against R. Kelly, which you may have heard of. Gentlemen, it's so good to see both of you. It's good to see you, James. We wish you were here with us in the bathroom at CBGB. (laughs) It's lovely no matter how you look at it. 10 years ago, Jeff Ruby in Chicago Magazine said, for us rock geeks, The show, Sound Opinions, sounds like conversations we wish we were having. And that still holds true. I I love, I I, I nerd out every time I listen to you guys. You are so literate and conversational on the topic of music. And I don't want to bury the lead. You are currently crowdfunding on Patreon to support Sound Opinions. So explain how that, or explain the why, I guess. Well, the crowdfunding in part, a big part, which means an enormous amount to us uh, that, that people are willing to support the show. Uh, we still have Goose Island on board as, as one of our sponsors, Dark Matter Coffee, um, you know, and we have a generous grant from the Goldschmidt Foundation. WBEZ, like every media organization in the universe right now, is uh, uh, financially distressed. I mean, the world ended last March. It shows no time. uh, uh, There's no uh, schedule soon for it to resume. Um, Everybody's hurting. And unfortunately, after 15 years at WBEZ as our home, um, you know, uh, they're no longer funding the show. They're still airing it twice a week, which is swell. You know, and there's still another uh, 150, uh, you know, 100, 100 whatever stations. Uh, we just added Albuquerque. Sweet. Um, I long for Albuquerque because the last time I was there, I flew in, hung out for a day, and then my wife and I had a splendid vacation in Santa Fe. Yeah, that, same would, here. that sounds fantastic yeah. right now. Yeah. See, I, I can never live in Albuquerque. You know, right now, you know. I, I can never live there because that truly is one of the only U.S. cities I can't spell. It is the top of my head. Look it up. <laughs> I have to look it up every time, but it's very cool. It's it's very close to Los Alamos, which is worth seeing. Fair, yeah. Which is where the last uh, the thing that was supposed to be the end of the world was supposed to start, but now there's more pressing problems. <laughs> Indeed. So you're done with BEZ. You're on. What, what is? What does Patreon mean as a fan of the show? What, what am I doing if I'm contributing to your Patreon? Well. Uh, you're essentially keeping the show uh, afloat. You're a big contributor to whatever we're doing here because it is truly starting from scratch. Uh, and it's amazing that after two months, I mean, literally within weeks, we were, uh, you know, had a sense that we can do this. Uh, so then when our relationship, our production agreement with BEZ officially ended, 
we were we were up and ready to go as an ind completely independent broadcast um, without missing a beat. And that was our goal all along. And the ma Patreon money and our listeners uh, gratifyingly jumped into the breach and um, helped us immensely. And people are, well, what's that money going for? Basically, it's going toward production, our production costs, which are now completely on us. We have two fantastic producers. Uh, we don't expect anybody to work for free. Uh, they're worth a lot more than that to us personally and also from a business uh, standpoint. Um, and also just the, the, the equipment, the, you know, we're sitting here in the CBGB's bathroom, otherwise <laughs> known as Jim DeRigatis's uh, yeah, But we did manage to room. keep these fancy mics here that the Goldschmidt grant bought us from BZ. But you, all of you that, know our producers. All of that, and, all yeah. of that money goes towards towards that. Yes, our you producers know. are fantastic. Andrew people. Gill worked at BEZ for 16 years and Alex Claiborne has never had a real job besides Sound Opinions. She transferred from intern to a six year staffer on the show. I, you know, it's sort of like, hey, the world has ended. Let's start a business. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, we're succeeding to the point where we are paying them and they can get their ACA Obamacare healthcare at least until the new Supreme Court justice sits. Um, you know, I mean, that's, that's, that's an accomplice. We're not making nothing, but you know, hey, I'm, I got weight to lose anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's interesting after years of watching bands figure out how to carve their own path independently from home, garage bands using home recording, I, I think you've quickly realized, oh, we could do a radio show without the big machination. I mean, without the money, but without the machinations of a big radio facility. I mean, it, the barrier for entry is surprisingly low once you start digging into it. Well, we've been writing about all these bands who are DIY and making records in their bedroom. And now we're realizing, hey, we can do a radio show from our bedroom too. So it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it is an uphill climb in a sense, but it is also gratifying not to have to answer to anyone other than yourselves. Well, and you know, I mean, what you can't do is have the Jim and K maybe performance studio, which is an extraordinary space at WBEZ, but uh, you know, where we had, you know, Radiohead, Yoko Ono, uh, Alan Toussaint, mm -hmm. you know, performing live and we're sitting next to them. But we have a partnership in the works that we can't tell you about yet, but is coming soon where we'll have those facilities. Sure. When people can go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> right now, ain't nobody going nowhere. Yeah. One of the oh, reasons I, I want the Peg Boy drive in thing. That is so cool. And I'm sure it's going to turn into a tribute to Pierre Kesty. Mm -hmm. Oh, how could it not? I mean, the timing, how can it not? Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have you both on this has been a fascinating four years, let's say. Journalism has been just flat out shit on over the past four years. Uh, everything I learned about journalistic ethics, I, I learned from circling in, in your orbits. As successful and respected members of the fourth estate, where do things go from here and how do they get better for journalism? Well, nothing like a simple question. Okay. So, um, <laughs> how many hours you have, Jim? <laughs> you know, it's uh, everything, uh, you know, just when you think the odds are stacked against you, I think that's when the uh, the media rises to the occasion and the media is this big monolith that everybody thinks is like, thinks like, oh, everybody thinks alike. It's not that at all. Uh, I think that's the one thing I object to is that people tend to lump all media into one basket and say it's all like this. And it's not. There's some serious journalists out there still doing great work. Uh, you know, I look at uh, the news every day and, and the news sources that I have and thank God for, for those journalists that are out there on the front lines reporting on what's happening in this country right now, um, and in the world for that matter. Uh, everything from climate change to, um, you know, health benefits to, you know, women's rights to their bodies to uh, civil rights, uh, those stories have been reported and, and reported well by a number of uh, media outlets. Some aren't doing so well, but, you know, that's the, that's the point. We're in America, we have a choice, um, and I think that is, I think if, if anything else, media in general, journalists in general have underlined their importance to the survival of democracy in our country uh, in these last two years. If we didn't know that already, we, we're being reminded of it now. And um, I also think it's inspired a lot of young people to wanna do this too. I'm just amazed at how many young people, despite everything they've been told about how little it pays and how much you're gonna get criticized, uh, still want to do this uh, because they feel it's a noble 
uh, profession, much in the same way that Jim and I, coming off the Watergate era, were inspired by those journalists who brought down a president uh, with their reporting. Uh, I think that 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 still inspires young people today. So I think that to me is the most inspiring thing. And I think it gives me a lot of faith that 10 years from now, we could be having the same conversation and it'll be much the same. Hey, the media is under attack. People don't like it. Uh, why would you want to do this in this environment and say, yeah, but it's still it's still going strong. You know, the only problem, James, is 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 the two of us and you, we all came from the indie DIY load the van yourself world. Right. And we have had jobs that have had the entirely not unreasonable perks of health insurance, right? Maybe a 401k that the companies never contributed to, but at least we were forced to save, right? Um, you know, the problem is uh, with 335 first year students this semester at Columbia, the number of them, uh, they're not all journalism students, but the number of them who are media students are extremely optimistic. They are almost three to four, uh, th three to one, they are other um, women women. It is young women that are getting into journalism that have the most fire. And that inspires me uh, enormously. But I would like for them to have like a salary that comes every two weeks and health care, <laughs> right. especially if they're going out and covering protests and, and COVID uh, events, right? I mean, it's not unreasonable. Um, but everything right now is, is looking toward a crowdfunded future. If, if you support your uh, podcast, if you support Sound Opinions, if you support public radio, uh, if you support uh, DNA Info Chicago or the Tribe, right? A uh, uh, Block Club Chicago now. Yeah. You know, it, it's all like we are are giving to this media. Um, I'd like to see some new business model emerge, uh, and and hopefully it will. But right now, and, and it's not just us. It's the same for the music industry. It's the same for every industry. What is the future uh, going to look like? It's not going to look like the old corporations and good riddance to them. <laughs> But, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a twice a month uh, paycheck with health benefits is not an unreasonable thing to ask. I, I do want to circle back to the music industry, but let's talk about music. That is what you guys are expert at. Curation is an interesting topic to me because we live in this period where we have access to everything. Anything ever recorded, we can find it. We can track it down. It's, it's on the Internet. I feel like it's really hard to identify, especially as we advance in age and we have families and, and other concerns other than going out every night. It's harder to find new music. How important is curation, part one? And where do you discover new music, too? Because I know, I mean, you're not going to clubs at all right now, but I know it gets harder as we, you know, are in our advanced ages. You know, but look at look at the push button world we're living in. It's so easy to access music now. I mean... You know, back in the day, we you had to make that trip to the record store to find the record that you probably haven't even heard yet, just heard about. Somebody said, gee, you really need to hear Joy Division. I go, what's that? You know, and, and running down to Wax Tracks Records literally changed my world, you know, in one day. I mean, it was one of those things. Now, somebody says, what's Noi? What's Joy Division? What's, uh, you know, what's Billie Eilish all about? Idols. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nobody's listening to radio anymore, but they're on the on the Internet and they're and they're just accessing all this incredible music. Uh, it, 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 to me, it's like, there's a, there are too many choices. I think what you're getting at is that there's almost so much music out there. It's like, where do you begin? Mm -hmm. How do you ferret it out? And um, I think that's the curation game is, is part of that ferreting out process. But I, I find myself getting uh, sent links, streams to stuff all the time by people I trust. And that world has expanded since you're, you know, since I was in this game for a long time as a journalist, um, you tend to develop pretty reliable sources. And when you do get people like that who are in your corner and say, hey, I think you're gonna love this, nine times out of 10, it's gonna work out. And I'm just amazed, not only that um, there's so much music out there, but so much outstanding music is still being made. Yeah. I mean, people yeah. say, oh, it was so much better you know, back in the 90s, you know, when, when Nirvana was uh, was still around, you know, or back in the 70s when Marvin Gaye was, was with us, you know, all true. They're great, great artists and great years for music. It's a great era we're living in right now. I 
I don't know, but I know it's, Jim it's, is it's in the same boat. Tremendous, word. tremendous. We we have more great music that we want to talk about on the show uh, every week than we can than we can possibly enumerate. That's why we've done, done these buried treasures uh, segments more often because we just, there's just so much music we want to get to. If if you follow you know all the negative aspects of social media with the Russian bots and the uh, the conspiracy, the QAnon, and all of this, right? It truly has been uh, a horrifying force, I think, in the world. But there is that flip side: is that it's so easy to get excited about something that you discovered and share it with someone. You know, I think now that the major label industry is dead, the volume of people hyping us has so decreased. Sure, almost non-existent so that now even you know the indie publicists are out there and they're they're working for next to nothing just like the indie bands and 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 our friends and listeners to the show and readers right you know uh coming to us you're right it's it's uh it's a, a wonderful conversation you know right now and it's you know the one thing i, I found too you, you, you what you just said sort of brought to mind the fact that there's a lot of direct band to critic kind yeah. of uh, conversation going on now, more so than I can ever remember. Uh, because it's now a case like, hey, I've got a new record out. Do you want to hear it? And you can. Yeah. Like in seconds, you can you can listen to some. It only takes 30 seconds, a minute to sort of get a feel for what it is about. You go, oh, this sounds really cool. I have gotten in the last two weeks, I would say five songs that came to me unsolicited from a band and I go, wow, this is pretty cool. Send me more, you know? And it, it, it just like, to me, that's almost unprecedented. There's no middleman anymore. That's and there's it. No, there's no big brother. So unfortunately, there's also no money. But if we were doing this for money, James. Exactly right. Day traders, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And somehow, despite our advancing age and the number of gray hairs and all of our beards, uh, we still haven't gotten the job mom always hoped we get. Yeah, right. Confirmed. Confirmed. I, but speaking of curation, James, who commented on the Facebook Live, uh, pointed to you guys and your curation. Uh, these two have been responsible for turning me on to more new music than anyone. Sound opinions rules. That's got to feel good to hear. Very kind. Because that's why you do it. I mean, you, it, it's that love of music and being able to kind of pass it on. You should pass the enthusiasm on. It absolutely is true. I mean, we are at a point, though, you know, Greg left the Tribune last year and I'm teaching. Um, you know, it, it's it's a it's a challenging point for sound opinions because we need the, the you know, producers, Andrew and Alex, uh, to, to work for us and to keep the show at the level it's been at. We don't want to do a show that's just Greg and me sitting here uh, yakking. Right. There are enough of those podcasts in the world and there's younger and hipper ones. Go listen to call her daddy. OK. Or Mark Marin or whatever you want to listen. I like Mark Marin, but, you know, he's a guy in the garage. We're trying to do something a little more ambitious that was up to the journalistic standards of of where we built the show over 15 years. And um, will we be able to? I don't know. I think we're in the same position as a lot of bands today, as a lot of artistic, you know, as as the hideout, as the empty bottle. Yeah. Will they be able to weather the storm? And, uh, you know, when I say, will the business work? You know, we never had high expectations. <laughs> Believe us, we're not getting rich at public radio. Um, you know, but, but you know, uh, will we instead have to go get the job as the greeter at Menards? Uh, uh, maybe, I don't know, we have X amount of time, but so does everybody. I'm not, I'm not saying woe is us. These are, man, you know, to be a clerk at Jewel today, to be the greeter at Menards, what a, horrible, awful time uh, for everyone. And let's not even talk about frontline workers, you know, but hey, Greg and I, and I tear up every time I fucking think of it, brother, um, those people on the balconies in Italy, the first really hard hit place, going out and singing opera. Yeah. This music brings us together. If anything gets us past November 3rd and past whenever the hell we hit a tipping point with a vaccine, it's gonna be art. Yeah. Where, would, where would we be without that right now? I mean, I can't even imagine what my last six months would have been like without having the music there. And, uh, you know, it just keeps coming. Artists keep, you know, it's like uh, Mike Watt, our friend Mike Watt from the Minutemen used to say, you know, when the wall, when you feel that wall pressing against your shoulder, that's when the great art comes out. And it's kind of like that, that whole uh, business of responding to 
crises by creating something, making it, something that you feel more human. I've uh, talked to, talked really to so cool. many local bands over the past six or seven months, and they all have the same issue. Well, we, we're sitting on music, but we don't know if we should wait till we can tour behind it or put it out now. My response is always, get it out there. We need it. I mean, it, it, it's medicinal at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Oh, you know, you know, uh, Bordis, my band uh, rehearses at Superior Street, you know, conservatively, there's 400 bands in those giant warehouse rooms, right? Um, it's really distressing. Every Saturday morning, we still get together and play. And we're writing material. We, we just revamped a 1919 blues song. 1919 influenza blues by essa jenkins right and we ramones it and it's like like it was written yesterday <laughs> right but those rooms are silent james yeah the only band i've run into down there in the last two months was ganser who did a radio recording and they were taking their gear back and they were you know they put out this fantastic album love and that band can't tour behind it and you know, I, I'm I'm distressed at how little music is being made because even if nobody else was hearing it beyond the rehearsal space walls, it's necessary right now to keep your sanity. One of the first gigs, actually my first radio gig was producing Sound Opinions back in the day uh, when it was on Q101 in the early 90s. One of my lasting memories was when Smoking Popes came in and played. Yeah. And uh, Josh Caterer of Smoking Popes just checked in on the live stream saying, God bless all three of you gentlemen. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Josh. I hope you're doing well. Yeah. No Love doubt. him. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the music industry. We've circled around it. I, rather than ask the, the doom and gloom questions of where are we going to be one year from now? Because you can't answer that without sounding really depressing. What artists or which artists have you seen or noted during this messed up period who are doing interesting stuff with content, with video? What's what's caught your attention? Because it's a time for innovation, if nothing else. Well, that's a good question. You know, I, I don't pay attention as much to the marketing aspect of it. And I assume your question has sort of a marketing aspect to it, which is totally legit. But that doesn't that's not what draws me in. Um, and I would imagine it's important to other people just to discover a band. Um, but I'm looking at, at, at some of the bands that are working now, and they've you know, Ganser is a great example. Melt Belly is another example. I mean, these artists are producing like their best work right now. So is that a coincidence or not? I don't know. But for whatever reason, it seems to me like artists are getting to bunker down and they've got nothing else to do. I mean, a lot of them don't have jobs. Yeah. They're, they're struggling to pay their rent. You know, how do I make myself feel human? Uh, in this environment. Well, I get together with my friends and make make a noise. And um, I think it's producing some incredible, incredible music. I feel the urgency of it, you know? Um, this artist, Rick Wilson from Chicago, uh, just just doing some extraordinary things. He did a drive-in concert too. You mentioned Big Boy mm -hmm. coming up, which sounds great. And the response I got uh, from people who went to see Rick do his drive-in thing was, it was amazing. And I think a lot of people were just drawn to the whole idea of like, he's doing it. He's going out there doing this for us under yeah. trying circumstances and we're in our cars, but we're dancing in our cars. You know, it's kind of like, you know, so it's, it's just like a kind of a cool, let's make something out of nothing kind of circumstance. And that's what I think all the greatest music has ever come out of those old circumstances of like, we have nothing here. We let, let's fill the silence with something cool. So for me, that spirit, is what is the great takeaway from this year, you know, more so than any, hey, they're, you know, they're doing these live remotes from blah, 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 and, and creating this kind of cool way of uh, doing this video. It's no, it's about this, that music is still out there. And it, you know, obviously with the internet, you can access it in so many different ways now, anywhere, anytime, that's a gift to us. Can you imagine if we were back in 1993 world mm -hmm. where we had to run to the record store or we had to run to um, you know metro or whatever to see something and and if we didn't have that available to us anymore where, where would we be then you know uh we'd still figure it out like those people in sienna you know they'd be singing from their porches you know we'd still do it i you know i i don't think um streaming concerts is an answer at all i applaud the drive-in uh efforts i haven't been to one yet and there have been backyard concerts around uh, i know liars club has had people on the roof you know <laughs> okay 
Um, you know, but I, I think um, uh, recording wise and making DIY videos, being really smart about it, I've been seeing fantastically creative work, you know, and, and that's tiding us over. But, you know, I always tell my students when we discuss the pros and cons of online, it's like, can you have sex with a partner online? <laughs> yes. Is it vastly inferior to being in the same room? You bet. <laughs> you haven't experienced that yet. James, the fate <laughs> of Empty Bottle, Metro, Hideout, uh, you know, all of these clubs. You know, one of the things I'm proudest of, you know, I wrote a book about R. Kelly, fine. Uh, I'm prouder of a segment we did that talked to uh, Senator Klobuchar, Senator Schumer, uh, the people behind Save Our Stages. You know, this is a vitally important issue. It was one of our first independent mm. uh, shows, which we were having trouble putting together interviews at BEZ. Now we can do whatever the fuck we want. Yeah. We're on my dining room table, you know, and and look, that's really important. And, and every week that goes by, we are closer to a world where when we emerge from this six months, nine months next year, uh, there's gonna be nothing but Live Nation left and all of those clubs and all of them like it, uh, like them across the country are going to be gone. And, um, you know, that's really horrifying to me. So in terms of, of marketing and, and uh, you know, we, we, we got to get behind that. Agreed. Uh, let's end on a positive note. Let's talk a little bit about music. Uh, you mentioned idols. I am so late to the idols game and I'm playing catch up and holy crap, this band. I know you, you went it's deep never, on them. Never too late, James. It's never too late. It's never too late. I am so all in on this band. There, this was a revelation. That new album was a re revelation to me. I can't stop well, listening to it. Let, let me just tell you, having seen them live, and that was what really converted me was seeing them live a few years ago. Holy crap! It's like another level. Um, the intensity. I mean, it reminds me of like you know, prime era Jesus Lizard. That intensity Absolutely. was probably uh, you know a little bit more crafted so i mean not that the jesus lizard weren't, weren't crafting great songs but it was kind of art punk the idols are kind of much more direct in terms of the way their songwriting goes it's like they're hitting you over the head with a great chorus in just about every song well you can understand the words yeah. <laughs> Dave, david yeah was speaking in tongues but the, but the intensity on stage is similar and it's also serendipitous that there's not a sense of hey, we've got this scripted set list you know they're out there making i mean they played this big festival last summer and you know they're handing their their instruments to the audience i'm wading through the audience and like you know it's chaos at the end and it was glorious it's the one thing i remember from you know all those days of music that band like just completely took the day and everybody's saying did you see this band from england you know it's like yes i did and it was amazing and uh you know the one downside of this year is that we don't get to see them live uh but the upside is they just made another great record and one of these days, we're going to look forward to seeing them live again. Yeah, for sure. And I know you're both Lydia Loveless fans. Oh, oh yeah. man. Yeah, she's that that new record is amazingly powerful. You know, she keeps getting to a new place on each album and uh, uh, the raw honesty. You know, I think, as you know, James, I am more of a psychedelic and punk rock type of, of person. If it doesn't have uh, feedback or a fuzz box, I get a little nervous. But I have to say, it's from the uh, the roots world, for lack of a better term, that some of the most searingly honest and uh, just moving political work has come this year. Jason Isbell, uh, Margot Price, uh, and her husband working together, Lucinda Williams, the new uh, Shamikia Copeland album, right? Um, it's really fantastic to me to hear the sounds of America, Americana, whatever you want to call it, raging in fury at, at what is becoming of America. And I would, I would count uh, Lydia Lovelace among those. Yeah, she's fantastic. One thing we've yet to mention this entire time, if people want to contribute to the Patreon, where do they go? Do they go to soundopinions.org? Yeah, yeah, we have soundopinions.org and you can, you know, some people hate giving uh, every month. We got to, we got to, um, 
uh, PayPal. PayPal set up and we got merch. We managed to take our merch with us from WBEZ. I don't know what use uh, pint glasses that said Sound Opinions was going to do them anyway, but we got we got merch. And it was, you know, it's completely indie. You know, I keep telling cop, you know, I got to get him to play Farfisa with <laughs> Vortis and then we'll have 45s. Right now we only have record tote bags. No one wants to see that. Pint glasses. Uh, and well, you, you do you do oh, tote bags? Because Record record tote bags for record <laughs> store day. Yeah. Okay. Because a tote bag. I mean, if you're if you're going to do a public radio show, the tote bag is that's part of the contract. You have to have a tote bag, right? Yeah, but these are those uh, skinnier record twelve inch vinyl size. So it's not like go to Whole Foods tote bag. Fair. Yeah. It's it, it, it's for record shopping. <laughs> it's hip, it's hipster approved. Record shopping, or if right. it rains, you can put it on your head. Well, I, I got to say, I, I you know I love and adore you both. I respect you immensely. Uh, I, I'm rooting for Sound Opinions to to keep on going bigger, better, stronger. Well, thank you. Indie. We have us. to take your brain and figure out uh, uh, more of this uh, DIY sponsor getting part. <laughs> That's the, you know, Sound Opinions is available for sponsoring your business if you're interested. Highly sponsorable with a national reach. Yes. It's not to love for an advertiser. International, really. We got some really loyal fans in New Zealand. We do all over, all over. Kind of strange, right? Yeah, all over the map. I get it. All right, I'm going to stop the Facebook Live. Greg Cott, Jim Deer, Thank you so much for doing this. It's a pleasure.